Well, I'm delighted to say that I'm now joined by Professor Brian Cox, OBE, a well-known face to us all. Um, morning to you. Uh, what are your first impressions of uh, the exhibition here? It's quite a large one, isn't it? It is very large, actually. My first impression was coming onto the site, actually, and there are signs up all over Aberdeen saying the, the congestion over the next few days will be terrible because of this conference, which tells you how big it is. But it's a good thing, though. It tells you how vibrant the industry is, but I suppose it's a bad thing if you're trying to get around Aberdeen. We've all been living in fear of this traffic yeah. Tuesday in Aberdeen. We've been preparing for it. Uh, you're going to be a key speaker in the plenary session, uh, and this event is, is probably more important than ever um, due to the, the economic situation we currently face and the industry is facing but we must not forget that there's still a need to bring new talent into this industry isn't there? Oh absolutely I mean th this industry is obviously a, a long-term industry you can't, you can't operate the modern industrial world without this industry um, and that means that over the long term not the short term you need engineers, you need a lot of engineers. There's a, there's a frightening statistic in, in, in Britain at the moment, and broadly across engineering industries, we need a million more engineers in the, in the UK economy by 2020. A million more. Now we graduate less than that, and part, much of it's demographics actually, which is the, the same in all engineering industries. You have a, a, a cohort that came through, they're 55, 60 years old, they have a lot of experience, they're going to retire. Where are those new engineers? So if you're looking at a you know, 10, 20, 30 year horizon, which this industry is, then you need the 20, 25, 30 year olds in the industry now. It's not an overnight fix, you know, it can't just be sorted, but there must be ways in which we can be encouraging young people from a very early age who have an interest or an aptitude in science and technology to become engineers, the engineers of the future. Absolutely, it's, a bit, it's about, I think, part of it's about perception. So one of the key problems we know in engineering is getting young women into engineering. So the, there's, the, there are role models, you can list those things, that, but one of the key things seems to be the response of parents when the daughter comes and says, I want to be an engineer. Um, then there's a big report actually recently that said that, that, that it can be an unconscious bias or it can be a conscious bias with parents who say, well, it's not for you, or, or it could just be some kind of reaction where, where the, the image of engineering might be of, of getting dirty and going and building bridges and roads and big sort of Victorian image of an engineer which parents feel is not for their daughter. Entirely wrong now of course, we all know that m much of engineering is very high tech engineering, there's also big heavy engineering and that's interesting as well. So I think there's, there's parental messages, there are messages from schools that somewhere along the line we're, we're losing many thousands of potential engineers and I think you have to target the talent pools that we're not accessing. If you need, you, we, we need more engineers than we can produce. Um, where, are, where, where is the talent pool that we're not getting to? Uh, young women is obviously the biggest and most important one I think. Um, everybody likes role models and young people in particular need role models to show them the way and the, and the likes of yourself and I put you in the company of Stephen Hawking, you're making science popular for the young generation. Uh, you must realise that the effect and the power that that has. Um, yeah, more broadly I think. Um, the, the, the image of science has changed I think uh, for the better over the last decade or so. A lot of that's the media. Um, the big stories like the Large Hadron Collider where I work at CERN, yeah, that's, that's exciting. Partly though because of the framing that we put on it. So particle physics is actually very difficult to describe. You know, it's not the easiest thing. So what are we doing? It's called electroweak symmetry breaking. It's probably, but, you know. Or you can say, well we built this machine, it's the biggest machine ever built, the biggest scientific experiment ever built, 27 kilometres in circumference. Great engineering story by the way as well. The, 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 so many engineers make that happen and then you say well what we do is recreate the conditions that were present just after the Big Bang and, and we found in our research in schools that that when you start talking about things like that we look at the origin of the universe that that message starts to resonate and some of those people that they get interested in that will not actually go into particle physics few of them will many of them will go into science they'll go to university they'll find new things some of them will go into engineering they'll find the idea that you built this thing which is colder than space the whole thing runs at 1.9 kelvin that's colder than the universe is <laughs> in between the galaxies so that's an engineering challenge and then the so you can you can be an engineer that contributes to the science you can be so, so i think it's, it's that framing and, and saying well in an endeavor such as this you need all these skills and you can all contribute 
you've touched on that marvellously because that was my, what my next question was going to be that you know for the young people who are good and have skills and have an interest and they see as you say that the, the, the great big um, collider that was on the yeah. news and they see it through social media but they can't really work out where they potentially fit into that world yeah. and it's making it clearer to them giving them more obvious career paths. Oh, um, I'm a patron of a school in, in Tower Hamlet, it's called St Paul's Way, about six, seven years ago a completely failing school, no, no sixth form, uh, utter disaster in every way. Now it's had an excellent Ofsted report, so it has a sixth form, half of its sixth form has went to do uh, STEM subjects at university, science, technology, science, technology, engineering, mathematics, and half of those were young women. So complete success. It did it by focusing on science and by involving the universities, involving the local industry, which in that case is finance, because it's in Tower Hamlets. But we brought the universities in, brought the local industry in, uh, have regular contact with them. And what that does is it gives the students information and a sense of possibility. I think that's, that's key because if you come from a background where your parents haven't been to university, um, you perhaps no one on your street ever went to university or your family, you don't know anyone who went to university, it seems impossible. So if you say I want to work in offshore industries, right? I, I like this idea, right? in, in, I'm in Aberdeen, I can see those, the, those oil rigs, I'm fascinated by those things. Um, how do you get to do it? If, if you're from a background where you, you can't imagine the steps to go through to become a professional engineer, then it's a huge barrier, so it's information. And I think that's where the industries and universities can come together. The, the closer you work with the schools, the more you can try and perhaps put some research into the schools. In, in Tower Hamlets we have a, a partnership with Queen Mary University to look at diabetes because diabetes is a local health problem and also an interest in local research area. So that research that the students can do then acts as a launch pad to sh and, and then they talk to university people, they talk to industry people and off they go and then we, get, we had one um, student go to Oxford to do medicine uh, from that school uh, whereas six years ago there wasn't even a sixth form in the school. So, it, so so that, I think that's a message, key message in, in Aberdeen here that we, you know, the, the, the offshore industry is enormous. So the closer that integrates with the schools, the more those students can see the path through to working in that industry. That's an absolutely fantastic message to end on. Thank you very much indeed. I hope you enjoy your time here at Offshore Europe. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining us.